I'm E.G. Marshall. Honor thy father and thy mother, we are told. And since this is a commandment, it stands to reason that honoring dad and mom was not something that ancient and primitive people were prone to do. And so, it's possible to understand why the offspring of our ancestors might not be kindly disposed toward their parents. After all, it was common practice to sell one's children into slavery or yield them to the enemy as hostages or sacrifice them to the gods. Yes, children in ancient times truly had grievances. But uh, the children of today, the adored, indulged children of our time, why do so many show so little honor or even respect for dad and mother? Where did we go wrong? I'm afraid I don't understand what you're saying. I am saying we are the head of an army. An army? Yes. A revolutionary army. We will soon take over the whole country. What? What's the purpose of the revolution? To create a new society. Ah. How uh, will it be different from what we have now? To begin with, there'll be no place in it for men like you. And when does this revolution begin? Right now. And you have an historic place in it. What's that? You will be the first one to be officially executed. I'd just as soon waive that honor, if you don't mind. Stand still. Our mystery drama, The Primrose Path, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams and Rosemary Rice. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. They make a nice-looking couple, Marianne Mellon and Jeffrey Pollard. They look like typical students in this large university town. Typical students out on a typical date. Let's see. They've taken in a movie, and now Jeffrey has parked in front of Sparkles, a popular hamburger hangout. Suddenly, two young men appear, seemingly out of nowhere. They wear stocking masks, making identification impossible. One flings open the car door on the driver's side and drags Jeffrey out of the automobile. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Shut up, and you won't get hurt. What do you mean, I won't get hurt? Hey, I tossed him out of the way, sir, but I'm holding on to her. You don't have to kill him. Let's get out of here. Help, help, somebody. Help. Get behind the wheel, sir. All right, that's right. Why isn't something being done? Now, Mr. Mellon, everything is being done. There are no results. The entire city police force and the FBI has come in. Where is my daughter? Sir, you must be reasonable. Why? Why should I be reasonable? We Inspector? are doing all we can. It's not good enough. I know you're upset. You're paid to preserve law and order. I... I have some questions, Mr. Mellon. Has there been any attempt... You exist for the sole purpose of apprehending criminals. Has there been any attempt to contact you? No. They tried to contact me. Wouldn't I have reported it? Well, sir, it's just that it's been three days since we... Animals. They think they can break me down. We, um, asked for a list of all your daughter's friends. Why? You believe some of her friends may have kidnapped her? <laughs> We're only trying to discover... I've already it. told you about her friends. Have you told us about all of them? Now, see here, Inspector. Were any of them jealous? Did she have any enemies? My daughter? Kidnappings are usually planned, Mr. Mellon, and very often there's some inside connivance. Now, could one of your servants have overheard your daughter and Jeffrey Pollard make plans for the evening? But you may have traitors among your workers. I have none in mine. How would the kidnappers know they'd be parked at that hamburger joint? How would they know? Well, I ask you, Inspector... Where else do young people end the evening in this town? Who would want to harm your daughter? You have a one-track mind, and it leads nowhere. My daughter is the sweetest, most generous child. 
so gentle, so sensitive. She's not like so many of today's depraved young people. She's not a part of this drug craze, whatever they call it, culture. Mr. Mellon, have you told us everything that might help? I could talk to you about that child for hours. <laughs> I remember she was eight years old. Yes, sir. Well, I, I don't think you'll be contacted by phone. I, I bought her a dog. <laughs> she called him Primrose. Yes. You see, the kidnappers will expect it to be tapped. He bit people. I wanted to have him destroyed, but she said, Daddy... Let's send him up to the farm. They'll have to get in touch with you to arrange for the ransom. You see, she felt... And as soon as you receive any communication at all, you must let us know. Is that clear, Mr. Mellon? It's okay, Hammer. It's me, Jeff. Are you sure nobody trailed you here? I'm sure... We still don't know about this joint for a hideout. It's perfect. Who'd think to look for her on old Mellon's property? Relax. I'm not supposed to relax. I'm Army Chief of Security. This farmhouse isn't... It's been deserted for years. Nobody ever comes here. Jesse? Yeah. Jesse, baby. Marianne, you're... I'm okay, Jesse, baby. Okay. Jeffy, you have to have a new name. As commanding officer and general, I order you to get a new name. After all, man, you're a colonel in the blood of the People's Revolutionary Army. That's the blood of the People's Advanced Revolutionary Army, baby. Right on, Hammer. Right as rain. But you can't call me baby no more either. My name is Chris. Tell him what Chris means. Now, Marianne, we, we have some serious matters. Uh, Chris is a melee sword, and I took that name to demonstrate solidarity with our Pacific comrade. Hey, Charlie, you shouldn't have given us so much. Uh, is his name isn't Charlie, it's Hammer. Yeah, right on. Hammer the hammer, smash away the rotten timbers that hold up this corrupt society. Oh, I, oh, I want to go to sleep. Marianne. Ah, she's okay. Leave her alone. I thought we agreed to keep her off that stuff. We can't. Why do you mean we can't? It's poison for her. Look, when she's off it too long, she wants to go home. She starts crying, I want my daddy. She hates him. This, all this was, was her idea. Well, you know dames. Now, look, how about the little... Oh, another couple of days. Why wait? Let her father think she's dead. Then when he finds out she's still alive... He'll be so grateful he'll even enjoy making the payoff. Oh, 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 oh. Man, we picked right. You're just a cat to lead this army's psychological warfare. Yes? Who? Mr. Mellon? The Arthur Mellon to see me? Oh, well, show him in. Mr. Starr? Please, uh... Sit down, Mr. Mellon. <clears throat> what can I do for you? I wish to retain your services. For what purpose? I want you to find my daughter. You've... Well, you're not serious. I have just given your receptionist a check for $10,000 as a retainer. Mr. Mellon, I am just a lone private investigator. I'm aware of that. All the resources of the city police plus the federal government are working for you. None of them has produced any results. Well, now, what makes you think that I, all by myself, could do better? I will give you some information that has not been released to the authorities. Do you mean evidence that's been withheld? In that event, sir, I must inform you... You're young, you're rash, you jump to conclusions. I did not say evidence. I said information. What sort of information? Information concerning the relationship between my daughter and me. Yes. Now, this is privileged... I didn't tell the police the truth. Oh, now, wait. I can't be a party. I told them she was an angel. I should have said a monster. Why is she a monster? Because her values, her morality, her ethics have become twisted, distorted, perverted by certain... Obscene elements that are permitted to flourish today in our society. In what way? <laughs> I am a male chauvinist. Well, aren't we all? I am also a capitalist pig. Me. 
I am draining the heart's blood from my degraded and brutalized workers. What are you? <laughs> I employ 978 people. There isn't one that doesn't own a house and a car. Two cars. Well, Mr. Mellon, you know how so many young people feel today. He says I'm destroying the social fabric. <laughs> what am I doing? I make plastics. Now, why should that bother anybody? Well, Mr. Mellon, what good does all this information do me? She's, she's become... A radical. A violent radical. There, there were some bombings a while ago. The, the federal buildings downtown. Hold on, sir. If you know that your daughter has bombed any of those buildings, you're an accessory. And when you tell me, I become an accessory, too. Unless... I don't know that she did it. What about Jeffrey Pollard? Oh, he agrees with her about everything. He's studying for his master's degree in chemistry. Are the police aware of that? Do they know there might be something significant in his being a chemist? But I, I don't know for a fact that it's significant. How does he support himself? He works part-time in my factory. The raw materials in a plastics factory, many of them, could also provide the raw materials for explosives. Well, certainly. Any fool knows that. All right. Uh, how is all of this supposed to help me? <sighs> One night, I heard Jeff and Marianne talking about something called <laughs> the blood of the people's revolutionary army. Now what kind of army is that? Well, it's an army that's supposed to destroy our sick society. And she and Jeff have been talking about raising money to arm the poor and the oppressed. I see. What do you see? It's kidnapping. It's arranged to gouge the money out of you. Well, well, that's what it could very well be. And that's why you need the police and the FBI. They have information on all these groups. What do you expect me to do? What I couldn't expect them to do. Keep your mouth shut. I don't want it known that she's a part of the whole subversive crowd. But those facts will have to come out. Why? I want you to get to her somehow. Bring her home where I can talk some sense into her. And this whole business will just blow over. How do you expect me to find her when the police and the FBI... I have given you a lead. Jeffrey Pollard. Jeffrey Pollard is an automatic suspect. True. But the police have no real reason to assume he's guilty. And after a while, they'll relax their surveillance. You, on the other hand... You're wasting your money. I want my daughter. What makes you think that you can talk sense into her? Oh, this, this, this is a temporary madness. She's got too much good breeding. Too much of her father in her. I still insist the police have a better chance. If I tell the police what I've just told you, the whole world will see my daughter as a depraved, wanton psychotic. I'd rather see her dead first. Mr. Mellon. Find her. Quickly. Quietly. But it isn't possible for me. It is. You know what makes all things possible? Money. Here. Here. I'll sign a check. Now you just write down your own figure. That's quite a relationship between father and daughter. One thing we know, Mr. Mellon has unlimited confidence in the power of money. Anything, anybody is for sale, provided you add enough zeros to the check. Well, we'll have some spirited buying and selling when I return shortly with Act Two. All the world's a stage, said the great poet. And obviously, the statement is so true that we tend to overlook it. So many of us are so busy playing a role so much of the time that it becomes difficult to determine just what our original motivations were or even why. On the face of it, a wealthy young girl has been kidnapped. But the face, as we have seen, is a false one. So far, most of the principal characters in this story have already been caught in one lie or another. You want to see me, Inspector Broom? Star it, why would Arthur Mellon visit your seedy office? I admit I'm not in the high rent district, but it's really not seedy. Just answer the question, Star it. I'm not required to answer the question, Inspector. That's right. And neither am I required to play ball with you when you need cooperation next time. He engaged my services. Why? He isn't satisfied with yours. Who does he think you are, Sherlock Holmes? Inspector, what did you get from the eyewitnesses? A migraine headache. Two guys. 
appear to be young. They either were big and fat or short and thin. They were either wearing denims or slacks and jackets. They were dressed in either black, blue, green, or red. And the boyfriend? Oh, Jeffrey Pollard, that's a clean kid. Says he didn't have to do it. He's going to marry her and get it all legally one day. Yeah. But we got a tail on him, just in case. Looks like it'll be a long, hot summer. Followed by a long, cold winter. Do me a favor, Starrett. Anything for a pal, Inspector. If you should happen to find her, let us know, huh? Mr. Mellon, I must know more about your daughter. Why? Because there must be a reason why she turned against you. She never did. She... Well, maybe I didn't spend enough time with her after her mother died. And when her mother died, I was out of town on a business trip. Well, what would that have to do with her? I hate to speak ill of the dead. But her mother tried to poison the child's mind against me by saying... I was neglecting the two of them, using business as an excuse. Were you? Uh, look, I refused You to... hire me. You pay me a fortune. But you refuse to help me. I want to know more about your daughter. I bought her a, a dog. She was eight or ten at the time. She named him Primrose. He developed into a vicious brute. Mr. Mallon. He should have been killed. But she said, Daddy, he's a wild animal. He's... Frustrated, He needs to hunt. Send him to the farm. <laughs> Up to the farm. This doesn't help me. It's how I remember my daughter. How she was. Her understanding. Her, her depth of character. Did your daughter ever bring anyone around to the house that you didn't like? Uh, there were a great many I disapproved of. And I start with the ones you disapproved of the most. Yeah, well... There were two in particular. And what were their names? I was never interested enough to find out. They'd come over with Jeffrey and sit around talking. Uh, describe them. Uh, one was uh, of a very tall, huge man, about 25 or so, black hair. The other was somewhat smaller, very wiry, very blonde. And they would just sit around and talk? Yes. Always appeared to be a lively kind of a conversation. Well, except seems to me that the big black-haired one never opened his mouth. At all? Uh, I, he struck me as, as a person who <laughs> simply couldn't talk. Hey, Mama. Still alive and out of jail? Barely. <laughs> I put on the house. Oh, I don't ever when I'm working. Oh, what are you working on? Look, uh, can we go where it's just a little bit quieter? Oh, step right into my parlor, said the spider. And I uh, used to be a pretty good-looking spider. That was before <laughs> your time. All right, all right, all right. Now, tell me, what do you know about the blood of the People's Revolutionary Army? Uh-uh, you know the rules, Starrett. No info. That's how I make sure everybody loves me. Yeah, because I love you, I want to do you a good turn. If that army ever met in your joint, your accessory... Uh, to what? The melon kidnapping. Mm, the name again? The Blood of the People's Revolutionary Army. Uh, no. Does it exist? No. Three, four kids get together. They got a political party or an army. The girl, Marianne Mellon, is she in any of these circles? I haven't heard. The boyfriend, Jeffrey Pollard... No. But you see, they could have been in the closet waiting for the right time to come out. A big black-haired guy. The world seems full of big black-haired guys. Uh, this one would have a kind of blondish sidekick. Black hair would come over more or less as a dummy. Oh, he ain't a dummy. No? No. That's a zipper. The zipper? Yeah, he don't talk. The reason is, he says, is because if you keep your mouth zippered up, you'll never get in a jam. So his friends call him the zipper. And what's his friend's name? Blondie? I don't know. Never said. I never asked. Did you ever see them with Marianne Mellon and Jeff Pollard? I might. A couple of times. A little foursome at the table? When was the last time you saw them together? Uh, last time. Oh, I remember. It was the night she was kidnapped. You're sure? I'm sure, because I read the paper the next morning, and I remember telling Papa 
Why, those two were the, in the joint just a couple of hours before it happened. You haven't seen Black Arrow Blondie since? No. What's it all about? It's about 100 bucks. Here. What for? To keep your mouth shut. Oh, you know me, Starrett. I never talk. Yes? My name is Starrett. I'm a private investigator. I've already told the police everything I know. Have you? Well, please, excuse me. You have no official capacity. I have a pretty good unofficial capacity. I was retained by your prospective father-in-law. Oh, all right, come in. All I know is what I told the police. We were parked in front of Sparkles. Suddenly the car door was flung open. A big guy dragged me out, slugged me. Then he and another fellow drove off with Mary Ann. And you couldn't describe them? Well, they wore stocking masks. And their clothes? Well, it all happened so fast. You just weren't able to get a good look. And besides, you were practically in a state of shock. Yes, uh, that's exactly what I said to the police. Oh, that's an excellent story. Sharp, clear, plausible. What do you mean, plausible? They were witnesses. Yes, and what they saw was some excellently staged theater. Four actors playing their parts to perfection. Now, just a minute. You have no right to make these completely unfounded allegations. What? You're accusing me of... You're accusing Marianne and me of staging this. I must say, you catch on. Get out of here. I don't, I don't care who hired you. Who is the commander-in-chief of the blood of the people's revolutionary army? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So far, no harm has been done. Now, I know I'm on the right road, but I can't be more than just a couple of steps ahead of the cops and the FBI. And when they tumble, you're done. This is preposterous. You're telling me? Okay. You and Mary Ann, you probably believe you can start a people's revolutionary army. Why do you persist in this kind Zipper of... Zipper and Blondie. Now, these are just a couple of strong-arm huskers. You think you'll see them after the old man coughs up the ransom if he does? You think any of the dough will go for guns for the poor and the oppressed? It's the last you'll see of those two. You'll be left holding the big empty sack. Or you'll be dead. Are you manufacturing this fiction to justify a fee for Mr. Mellon? Here, kid. My card. You're going to need help to get out of the jam. Call me. Where you been all this time? I'm being tailed. I have to be careful. Did you shake him? Yeah, finally. Now, listen. Jeffrey. Huh? Jeffrey. I want to go home. I, I just want to go home back to my father. Well, 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 well look, Marianne. Okay, okay. You'll feel better in just a minute, baby. Jeffrey, what we're doing, it's, this is crazy. Oh, baby, you're going to feel it hit and take hold. Who are we? To think we could start a revolution. The, the, the four of us, I mean. You'll be crying again. Nobody needs guns. Guns kill people. Take that deep <laughs> breath, baby. Go <laughs> ahead. You're <laughs> taking off. <laughs> oh, why not? Okay. Well, everybody listen to me for a minute. Marianne. My name is Chris, remember? Yeah, Zipper, ham up. All of you, listen. We have to call it off. Call it off? What are you talking about? Somebody's wise to us. Somebody knows, knows it's all staged. Yeah? And he was telling me he knows all about the blood of the People's Advanced Revolutionary Army. How could anybody know that name? Only the four of us. Hey, what's all the noise and yelling about? Who is this guy? A private detective. A private detective, huh? That means he must have put it all together himself. What's his angle? He wants me to call it off. Yeah? Before it's too late. A private detective, yeah. That means he must be the only one who knows. He's the only one right now. But he says he can't be more than a couple of steps ahead of the cops and the FBI. Okay, who is this guy? Does it matter? Sure it matters. We don't want to kill the wrong pig. What do you mean, kill? That's how it is. But, but what? We expect to kill, don't we? Uh, yeah, yes. He could end the movement right now, couldn't he? Well, but you're... Just... Isn't that enough reason? You still, you What, can't... are you a sometime liberal or something? No. Did you join the revolutionary movement just because you thought it was hip? Come on, man. We gotta take a vote. All in favor of killing this pig now. Signifying the usual way by raising your right fist. All right, mine's up. So's the zipper. How about you, Chris? Baby, you can't break an egg in an omelet without making eggs or something like that. The blood of the people's court of revolutionary justice is spoken. 
We killed a pig. What's his name? Start. How would you like to be tried in absentia and be unaware of the charges against you and also be oblivious to the fact that a trial is being held in the first place? You'd be surprised, but this kind of thing is de rigueur in so many parts of the world. Well, justice of a sort will be done when I return shortly with Act Three. As our society becomes ever more complex and sophisticated, it becomes ever more fragile. A mere handful of people may hold an entire city at their mercy. All it takes is a knowledge of where the vulnerable spots are. And so we face the danger of attack by any small group at any time, from any quarter. Is this to be part of the price we pay for civilization? But how? How should we kill them? Shoot them. Who's going to do it? The only fair way, draw a card. Well, I... You know a better way. Okay, zipper, hand me the deck. You want to shuffle? Go ahead, cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. High man's a gunner. Zipper, what are you doing? <laughs> That's right. Chris? You can't ask Marianne. How many times I have to tell you a man the name's Chris? But we can't ask her to... Hand me a card, Hammer Man. Ooh, what is it? I can't even see. It's a nine. Okay, I'll draw. Hey, you off the hook, baby. I got a ten. Okay, Jeffrey. But, but I, I couldn't kill anybody. Or the people. Draw. Oh, hey, man, would you look at that? The old lady herself, the queen of spades. Hey, you won. But, what, what am I... How am I going to... Give my revolver, Zipper. The 38. Now, all you've got to do is get to him. When he's alone, at home, in his office. You just walk up, and you shoot him. Shoot him. That's right. Don't say nothing. Don't pull around. Just shoot. But I can't. Baby, you gotta do it. Hello? Uh, Mr. Starr? Who is this? I uh, would like to see you. Why? Well, it's a, a confidential matter. The office is closed. Well, this is important. C could you meet me there in a half an hour? I'll make it worth your while. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Half hour, huh? Maybe I'd better be early. Come in. It's open. Hey, hey, let me go now. Let's turn on a light and see who you are. Oh. Well, I thought your voice sounded familiar. It's Jeffrey. <laughs> Don't you? Of course not. And look what's on the floor. A gun. Yes, it's, it's it's mine. Yours? Yeah, uh, yes. It uh, must have slipped out of my pocket when you uh, jumped me. Is that a fact? Yeah. Well, I must be seeing things. I thought that gun was in your hand. In any event, what are you doing with a gun? Well, ever since that night, I uh, decided I needed to uh, protect myself. Yes, uh, permit me to extract the cartridges. And now, you may have it. And don't hurt yourself. Now, tell me, why are we here? Well, I know you suspect me of being part of a plot to kidnap Marianne. I, uh, I have to clear my name. Besides, you uh, can't prove anything. If I can't prove anything, why should you care what I think? Well, no one likes to be accused unjustly. But I'm accusing you justly. And here's the rest of it. You came here to kill me. Oh, no. You're no good at this business, Zipper or Blondie. I don't know what you're talking You've about. You've been seen with Zipper and Blondie. At any rate, either one of them may have had a better chance. Now... Why did they send you? Hmm? Well, maybe they figured I'd kill you in self-defense. One mouth less to feed when the pie is sliced up, right? You had this hallucination. We're getting close to pie time, aren't we? Sooner or later, the old man will be asked to cough up how much. There's nothing I can say to you. 
I know the story, the whole story. But I don't have a single shred of proof or you'd be in the cooler this minute. Now, look. Look. Let me help you. I don't need any help. You're in over your head. You had noble, lofty motives. But now you have to play dirty and you don't have a stomach for it. Is there any way I can convince oh, you? We're past that. You have to convince yourself. The thing is all over. It's just a hustle for dough. Now, let me help you. Why do you insist I need help? Where are you holding her? I can pick her up. Nobody gets hurt. We'll even pay off Zipper and Blondie to keep their mouths shut. We can work out a heroic rescue tale for the press. You can't get a better deal. You you don't know what you're talking about. Goodbye, Mr. Starr. I'll help you. I'll help you in spite of yourself. Better tell Blondie and Zipper you killed me. You're crazy. I don't know, Starrett. It's crazy. You want the girl, Inspector. You want the kidnappers, and you can even have the credit. But how can I give it out that you were found murdered tonight? Why not? In a day or two, you can discover you were mistaken. Why do you want anyone to think you were killed? I have one lead. I have to protect it. If his friends find out he didn't kill me, he's dead. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Do you have any better leads? Do you have any leads at all? Yeah. Uh, all right. It's a sort. Listen, I came back to tell you that we don't have to tell us nothing. We heard it all on the radio. What? Well, what did you hear? He's dead. They just found his body. Starrett is dead. They, 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 they what? Hey, man, you are now one of us. But, but, but I, I, hey, how'd you do it? Well, I, 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 okay, okay, okay. It ain't cool to talk about it. Look, you go inside and talk to Marianne and uh, take his tape recorder. She's going to make a message to the old man. But you... Have her tell the old man that she's okay. One million bucks, right? Small bills. Eleven o'clock at night, behind a billboard at exit nine on a turnpike. Anybody tries to follow, the girl gets it. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. We got to move fast. <laughs> You got the tape recorder. Okay, groovy. I know just what I'm going to say. Listen, we, we've been betrayed. It, it's no good. We have to get out of here. Oh, man, we need a million bucks to buy guns on the people. Marianne, they're out and back working on the car. Let's make a run for it. But, but they're our brothers, our blood brothers. Try to understand. I, I, I know you're kind of spaced out, but tr try to understand. It's wrong. What we're doing is wrong. And these are just hoodlums. But we, it, we, it doesn't uh, matter. We won't become revolutionaries or idealists. We'll just be common criminals. No. Now let's get out of here before it's too late. I guess uh, it's too late right now. See, Zipper called my attention to something. He knows all about these things. This revolver hasn't been fired. What do you think of that? I, I, I... Go ahead, smell it. Look at it. Clean as a whistle. So... Starrett isn't dead. And the two of you, you're playing some kind of a game. I couldn't go through with it. What did you tell him? Nothing. And what's this about his being dead? He's a private detective. He could have lots of enemies. Someone else could have killed him. It could be a coincidence. Okay, man. You better be telling the truth. Would I lie to a blood brother? Yeah, sure. Zipper, keep a gun on him. And if the cops show up, make sure that he gets it. Okay, Chris, baby, the ransom tape. Uh, the, the the tape? Yeah, go ahead. Now talk into the recorder. Don't do it, Marianne. They'll only kill us both when they get the money. Talk, baby. Talk. D Daddy, I... I feel so bad. Cut it. Look, tell him you feel great. Daddy, I, I feel great. I feel like I felt when... When Primrose was sent away. But we're not going to raise money for a revolution. Don't you see, Marianne? Zipper, he opens his mouth one more time. Plug him now. No, no. Don't hurt Jeffrey. Please don't. Okay. And start over and talk into that thing. Oh, I, I have to get my head together. Daddy? I, I, I feel great. I, I haven't felt this good since Primrose. Since... Well, well these, these gentlemen, they're very nice and... It's an outrage. And they want Mr. Starrett to deliver the 
One million. Sorry, don't they know you're dead? You must have gone wrong. To deliver one million dollars behind the billboard at exit nine of the turnpike. Please, please do it, Daddy. I, I haven't felt so good since Primrose went away. Now you know how good I feel. He has to do it tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I, I love you, Daddy, dear. A million dollars. And why do they want you to deliver it? Tell me, Starrett, are you in league with these people? Hold it, Mr. Mellon. Inspector, he may have made earlier contact and arranged it all to be able to share in the loot. Mr. Mellon, you're crazy. I acted on information you had given me. What information? It's privileged, Inspector. Starrett, don't you dare. This is a kidnapping. It's all surmise on Mellon's part. He thinks the thing was rigged by Mary Ann, Jeff, and two friends, Zipper and Blondie. Why? Ask him. Well, well, it just seemed likely, that's why. I have no proof. What are you going to do about the ransom demand? I'm going to pay it. He can deliver it. I want my daughter. Okay, Starrett, we'll tell you. They picked the right place. It's all wide open country. You can see a car coming for miles. Helicopter. They could spot them, too. All right, we'll come as close as we can. Let me, let me listen to that tape again. I... I haven't felt so good since Primrose went away. Why does she say that? Why bring up an old dog? Well, you can hear she sounds a bit uh, stoned. She's trying to tell us something. What? Okay. I'll stay here with our friend Zipper, and you'll go for the money. And when Mr. Starrett steps out of that car, you shoot him. Why? Why do you have to kill him now? The radio news says he's dead. You don't want the radio to lie, do you? All right, Starrett. This is Broom. We've arranged for a utility truck to repair a pole a hundred yards off the exit. The men will be cops. Is old man Mellon in the car with you? Yeah. Good. Now, first... Radio your guys who are doing the utility pole act to bag Zipper. It'd have to be Zipper as soon as he shows up. Blondie would be back at the farm holding the gun on. What farm? Ask Mellon how we get to his old farmhouse. Marianne. Marianne, wake up. I'm, I'm so tired. Oh, why am I so tired? Why do I want us to leave all the time? Marianne, they're going to kill us. No, no, they won't. They can't kill us. Nobody can kill us. My daddy is coming. He's going to save me. Your daddy. Nobody can help us. Nobody knows where we are. My daddy knows. How? How does he know? Because I I told him. You told him? How? My head. Oh, it's spinning all around. Marianne, how did you tell him? Oh, the whole room is spinning. How did you tell him? Oh, I said something on the tape. Something I said. I remember I said something. Okay, Oh. Oh. I just saw the car coming across the field. That means the zipper has the loop. And we say goodbye in more ways than one. You don't have to kill us. Eh, no hard feelings. Sure, come on in, zipper. We have to polish these two off. That's enough out of you. Huh, you like, like, like the whole oh, army's God. being disbanded. Daddy, oh, oh, Daddy, I knew you'd understand. Marianne, you're all right? Daddy, I knew you'd get the message about Primrose. Primrose? Sure, he got it. He got it in a flash the minute he heard it. And he said, boys... The reason she managed to say how happy she was about Primrose is that she wanted me to remember how we sent our old dog up to the farmhouse. The old farmhouse. He said, boys, that's where she's being held. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. Thank you, Start. Thank you. Starrett was so astounded at being thanked that he almost forgot to cash his check. Marianne and Jeffrey were held on technical charges of attempted extortion. But since Arthur Mellon refused to prosecute, they were freed. I regret to say that Hammer and the Zipper also went free in the end, since their silence was necessary to keep the world from knowing certain facts about Marianne. But justice, as you know, is blind very often. 
I shall find my way back here in just a few moments. The children of today, who are they? It's a generation unlike any the world has ever seen. A generation raised to consider miracles as commonplace everyday events. And the children struggle and strike out and amaze us and trouble us. And there are times when we fear they will even destroy us. But one day they grow up and become just like us. Our cast included Mason Adams, Rosemary Rice, Ken Harvey, Ian Martin, and Jack Grimes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It's not so easy to end everything. Not easy at all. And maybe that's my last message to the world. If you think ending it all is a snap, you better think again and think hard, because that's what it is, hard. It isn't just slipping out of the world the way you slip out of a room at a party you found boring. Why don't I feel something? Drowsiness or wooziness or something. I never felt so clear-headed in my life. Oh, I feel something. I didn't even eat the second cracker. Didn't eat any breakfast, no lunch. I ought to feel something. Oh, Lord. They're not going to trick me up on this, too. Not the last gesture of my life. They're not going to make this ridiculous, too. Like everything else, they're not going to make me a failure in this, too. I won't stand for that. I won't. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by all state insurance companies. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>